I guess you can turn back all the way until the drop date, right? But I don't know, way late in the semester. I don't know. Yeah, it's way, well, yeah, right after April 17th. Yeah, it's like two days after that. Yeah. I remember last semester the third test was like make or break for me. Yeah. All right, well, let's get started. Um, hopefully, you had an opportunity to get through all the trigonometric substitution homework. I know that, that it was a huge assignment, a lot of work. This assignment is 6.3's homework is the same. It's, it's going to be a lot of material. But as soon as we're done with this section, we're, we're kind of done with our integration techniques and we get into applications. All right, so we get to see why we would want to integrate something, right? Why would we even want to find the antiderivative? Uh, last class I ended by showing you where we can get this formula from. Do you all remember how I did that? I used trig sub, right? And I pointed out that that formula is in your formula sheet, right? And that there are others there. So let me kind of give you a layout of, of what we're going to try and do here. We are going to try and do integrals later on where we have integrals involving rational functions. These are rational functions. In college algebra, we would graph these vertical asymptotes, horizontal asymptotes, all these different things, x-intercepts. So these are rational functions. How do we integrate them? Well, to do those, we will use partial fraction decomposition. But before we can do those, we need to make sure that we can handle these types of integrals first. Because the problems that we're going to have, those ones I showed you with the rational functions, they will break down into multiple integrals. So we'll take one integral, it's a rational function, we'll break it down into multiple integrals, and each of those integrals is going to hopefully be something you know how to do or like something, one of these, all right? So if you can't do these, you're not going to be able to do the problems later. So we've got to make sure we're all on the same page here. So let's take a look at this first example. And what I want you to pay most, atten most of your attention to is the fact that we have a constant divided by a linear function or a linear expression in x. And when we have this situation, it's a very straightforward integration. Basic u substitution, u would be the denominator. du is just dx. We rewrite the integral. What can I do with that 2? Just pop that 2 out of the integral. We would have 1 over what? u. u. And then dx is du, so du. And the antiderivative of 1 over u is natural log absolute value of u plus c which is two natural, uh, 2 natural log absolute value of x minus 4 plus c, and we're done, right? Now, we want to get to the point where we see that and we just say 2 natural log absolute value of x minus 4 plus c, we're done. We don't want to have to do all this substitution. Make sense? Kind of like if I said, you know, what's the antiderivative of x squared? Everyone would just be like, oh, one-third x cubed. We want to be able to do the same sort of thing with that. Okay, so if we have a constant on top of a linear expression in x, then we should be in business, right? All right, let's change it up a little bit. If we have a constant over a linear expression in x again, this one's a little different. The difference is... Notice that in the linear expression, we have a negative 5 in front of the x. That's going to have a major impact on our answer. Kind of like when we, we integrate just cosine x, we get sine x, right, plus c. But if we integrate cosine, let's say, negative 5x plus 4, then this linear expression in here is going to make us, force us to scale. So what would the answer to this be? Negative one-fifth sine 
negative 5x plus 4 plus c. Everyone understand where the negative 1 fifth comes from? Because when you take, when you do chain rule on this and take its derivative, when you get to the inner part of the sine function, a negative 5 is going to pop out and you've got to kill that off, right? That same method, same principle is, is at play here. So let's see if we can just write the answer down first without doing any u substitution. Then I'll do the u substitution to confirm. So what would the answer to this be? Well, we know it's going to be natural log of 4 minus 5x, right? Plus c. Because the derivative of this is 1 over that, right? But then derivative of what's inside would, would give us that negative 5. And we don't want that, so negative 1 fifth out here should take care of it. Make sense? So again, we would want to just look at that and be able to get to that answer. With me? Now, if we did it you know, by hand, our u would be 4 minus 5x. Our du would be negative 5dx. And so what I would need to do is solve for dx right here. So I would scale both sides. So I'd have negative 1 fifth uh, du is equal to dx. And that way, when I rewrite the problem, integral 1 over u, the dx is going to be my negative 1 fifth. I'll pull that out, du, and then we just get natural log from this, right? And there's that one fifth, I was t negative one fifth that I was talking about. It'll be out there. Okay? Now, I don't have a, I'm, I'm going to move on to another example. Let's just see if you really understand that. Um, what if I gave you, like, integral 5 over um, 3x minus 1 dx? So the 5 would have to come out, right? Well, then it'd be times, one third. times a third, natural log 3x minus 1 plus c, right? So 5 thirds, natural log of 3x minus 1 plus c. I have some quizzes from last class. I'm going to pass these around. Just go ahead and grab yours. Make sense? OK. So we should be able to handle an integral where we have a constant on top of a linear expression in x. Let's see what's next. What if we have a constant over a repeated linear factor? So this time, constant on top, repeated linear factor. Linear factor, the 2x plus 1 is linear, right? T to say repeated means that it's, it's actually written twice. Now, we just write the squared there, right, instead? But repeated, right? It's repeated. Now, I'm not, we're not going to write it like that, but that's what we mean by repeated. And it could be a cubed up here. It could be a fourth power. It could be a fifth power. It doesn't really matter, right? If it's not a 1, this isn't a 1 up here, then it's repeated. Make sense? All right, so how could we handle this? How about just doing the same thing? Basic u sub. du is 2 dx, right? And their dx, solve for dx, so I have to scale by a half. So we get a half du equals dx. And then we rewrite. What do I have? 1 over u squared. And then my dx is going to be the 1 half du, so I'll pull the half out. The antiderivative of 1 over u squared is not natural log, right? It's only if it's 1 over u. So this, you have to use your power rule. This is really u to the negative 2, right? And then you just, you know, antiderivative of that is negative u to the negative 1. Right? Antiderivative of this is negative u to the negative 1. Then you have the half. So minus a half u to the negative 1 plus c. And if I rewrite this, this would be, let me see, negative 1 over what's, I'm going to take the u to negative 1, drop it down. So what was u? 2x plus 1 plus c. Make sense? The most com, what's that? Pardon me? Uh, oh, yes. Oh, yes, I did. Thank you. Um, the negative 1 half. There's a 2 down there, sorry. Negative 1 half 
the u comes down, the, the u had a 2x plus 1. You could distribute the 2 through. You could make that 4x plus 2, but I'm just going to leave it. All right, so the biggest mistake I see on something like this is that students will get it to here and then they'll say like natural log of yeah. u, all right? So just be careful. So we can handle that, yeah? Okay. None of these have required anything other than basic u substitution. Here's another example of the same thing. Constant over repeated linear factor. So this would be what u is x minus 5. And when you see u is x minus 5, when you see that there's a 1 in front of the x, right, that means you're not going to have to scale by anything. But if you continue with the substitution, then you would see that du is dx. And my new integral is what? 1 over u cubed du, right? Which is integral u to the negative 3 du, which is? Yeah, be careful with your numbers here. Negative 1 half u to the negative 2 plus c. So you're adding. You're adding one. Now I'm going to, yeah, you can, you can pop that thing down to the bottom so you have like negative one over the two which is on the bottom and then the u squared, what was u? X minus five, but then squared plus c. Is this okay? Pretty straightforward? Don't worry, it's going to pick up a little bit here. All right, let's look at this one. Constant over linear, we're good. Constant over repeated linear, we're good. Constant over a quadratic with no x term. So notice in this quadratic, this is a quadratic expression in the denominator, right? but there's no x term. There's an x squared term, but there's a, there's a missing x term, right? When we see that, we should be like automatic pretty much. Do you all recognize this? Uh, how do you mean? Go to the beginning here. Does that look familiar? 1 over variable squared plus constant squared, right? 1 over variable squared plus constant squared. We need to know that this formula is going to be our, our go-to when we see that. So I have 1 over variable squared plus constant squared. So for this particular problem, what's the A for me here? A is 3, right? It's the square root of the 9, which is 3. And the formula says the answer is 1 over A arctan of the variable over A. Right? So I'm just going straight to the answer. Formula 17, I'll just let everyone know that's what I'm using. It's 1 over A arctangent of the variable x over A3 plus C. Done. Nothing else to do. Um, you don't have to write number 17. I'm just doing that for your, for your reference. So on an exam, I would want you to do it this way. This can also be done by trig sub by turning this into this and going with the trig substitution that x is equal to a tan theta and then going you know, going to town with that. That's going to eat up 10, 15 minutes on a test. I don't intend for you to do that. If you've got a formula, use it. All right? You just need to be able to recognize that this is a common formula. Okay? Okay, so let's say this had been a 5. You just pop it out, and you'd have 5 thirds. 
but you wouldn't, the five would have no effect on this. Okay? Let me give you something else. I wanna, I wanna see how you do with this. What if the problem was integral, all right, seven over x squared minus nine this time, instead of plus nine. That is not formula 17. So you could use trig sub, but look at your formula sheet. Do you have anything on yeah. that page? What formula is it? 16 or 19? What is it? 19? What does formula 19 say? Which one says u squared minus a squared? OK, so this is formula 20. It says that this is equal to 1 over 2a natural log of u minus a over u plus a plus c. You are allowed to use this formula because it's on your formula sheet. Where does this formula come from? Trig sub, right? I could sit here and we could do this problem with trig sub and we would work it all out and we would get to this eventually. That's why I showed you the first one. So do you do uh, one sixth times one half, one seventh in front and then the rest is still the same? Yeah, let's do it. Let's actually use it now. Over here, our variable u is x, right? And a for us here is three. So we're going to go to this formula. It'll be 1 over 2 times 3, natural log of x minus 3 over x plus 3 plus c. So uh, wait, ooh, my 7, sorry, my 7, my fault. That 7 should have come out, right? So the 7's out here in front. So it'll be 7 sixths natural log x minus 3 over x plus 3 plus c. It's a terrible setup. Good? Questions? All right, let me make a small change to this. What if this problem was instead of x squared minus 9, 9 minus x squared? The other way around. That's formula 19. In 19, the only difference between 19 and 20, of course, these are switched, right? And everything else is the same, but this is plus and this is minus. Is that it? Yeah. Yep, that's it. Why do you think that the only difference is that these are, are switched? Because it's just the negative. Yeah, because if you were to take, take this problem right here, if I were to factor a negative one out of the bottom, Take it out of the integral. Wouldn't I be back to this? If I factor a negative out of the bottom, then I would have a positive x squared and a negative 9. And then this right here is formula 20, isn't it? So you would have, have a negative in front of formula 20. So let me go back to formula 20 here. I know this is going to seem confusing, but formula 20 is this, right? But imagine I put a negative in front. You can take that negative up as an exponent up here because it's a natural log. And when you have a negative on a fraction, what do you do? You flip it. So that's, that's why the formulas look almost exactly the same, just flipped. But who cares? You've got, the, you've got the formula, right? You can do it either way. So if you have a constant over a quadratic and you're missing an x term, you can handle these, whether it be x squared plus 9, x squared minus 9, or 9 minus x squared, right? All three different scenarios, you're covered. Right? Pardon me? Well, no. You can still handle it. Let me, let me give you one more. What if it was um, 5 over x squared minus 3 dx? Yeah, so you pull the 5 out. And then this right here we can still look at that as being something squared. So a for us here would be what? Root 3. Right, because if this was a 9 earlier, we said 3, right? Which is just the square root of 9. If this was a 4, we would say 2. If this was a 25, we'd say 5. But if it's a 3, we say, well, whatever the square root of 3 is. Yeah? And so the answer to this would be 5 times 
and I'm using formula 19, which is going to be 1 over 2 times 20. Okay, number 20. So 1 over 2 times A, natural log X minus A, so minus root 3, X plus root 